Ladies, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Please be advised that this movie has no nudity. I'm out. Come on, Annie. Let's go to the movies. Yeah. I just have to wee wee. And we're back. Just like the five musketeers. What the hell am I looking at? A country where culture means pornography and slasher films. If you had these boobs, you'd be obsessed with them too. Very exciting, big event. Everybody's excited, huh? We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. We're Cinemanda's podcast. So let me get this straight. We're going to a podcast. You don't sound like you sound like you sound like Doctor Teeth. Stop. Hey. No Muppets. I'm not doing Muppets. I'm doing the Macho Man. No, you're not. Yes, I am, I don't know brother. Who, I don't know who that was. That's not Macho like, Man. It's Doctor Teeth. It's not Doctor Teeth. That last one isn't Doctor Teeth. It's something else. Basically, it's, either I'm doing Macho Man or I'm having a bell movement. It's a I have a black out. Hispanic guy. I don't know. <laughs> hey, you see? Ah, have some Jimmy Chungus. Anyways. Oh my! <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm gonna turn you into horchata. Mm, horchata. Now we can bring out the big boss man comments. Now we can bring it all out. Here we go, oh, Ric Flair. Excited about woo. Yeah, we can just woo, woo the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to our. <laughs> well, welcome to Cinematis the podcast. Welcome back to our A24 uh, series here, uh, conducted by our lovely host Allison. How are you doing today? Conducted. Allison? I'm great. Uh, my name is Adam. I'm also here with Roman. Oh yeah. Oh no. Step into the Slim Jim. Snap into a Slim Jim. Baby in the bathroom. Stuck in my head now. Okay. Anyway, we are discussing what, Allison? Take we are away. discussing non-horror A24 movies. And this is the second installment of the series. And it is Roman's Choice. All right. And is that like Sophie's Choice? Yes. Roman, what movie out of the 12 that I gave you did you decide to make us watch? <laughs> <laughs> the joy and, and zeal. Uh, well, because Allison had so much fun when I uh, requested her to watch every single Rocky film, which, for spoiler alert, she didn't. Uh, yeah, she was shocked. She's like, what happened to Mickey? I actually enjoyed some of them. Oh, well, thank you. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, <laughs> so I chose Iron Claw. Uh, the reason why I chose Iron Claw is it was more recent than the other films that we were discussing today. Just to right, clarify, we had to pay for it. Just to clarify, it's yes. the Iron Claw. Iron Claw sounds like one of the long lost cousins of the um, Care Bears, like, like Ironheart, like and Lionheart. Lionheart, and, yeah. yeah. Isn't Iron Claw the uh, name of one of the bad guys in the Minions, like two? I don't know. Maybe. The Rise of Gru. No. Maybe. No There's idea. another uh, Minions coming out soon. Yes, I know. I'm sorry, Despicable Me. Yes. Yeah. Despicable they me just keep four. on ch- chugging them out. They're, they're, the, the money comes in, they won't yeah. stop. I mean, they're good. So Yeah, you're going to have uh, Despicable Me in space. That's soon. fine. I like the Despicable Me. I don't I like the Minions. Despicable Me? <laughs> Despicable Me. <Mimi. laughs> you know, from the Drew Carey uh, show. Despicable Me. <laughs> so, yes, the Iron Claw. The Iron Claw, because it's Iron. a move. Yes. Yes. Yes, this is, is the story of what? Of who? Who is this a story so about? So it's the story of the Von Erich family. Yes. Uh, which is... The cursed, <laughs> the cursed fucking family. The Von Erich family. Now, I, growing up, I was a kid of the 80s, so I was really into wrestling, professional wrestling. I uh, Growing up, not just WWF, not just WCW, but I liked the lower level stuff that would show up on like... 1.30 in the afternoon on ESPN, so we're talking Texas wrestling, we're talking global wrestling, blah, 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 so I'm really into like this whole sub-genre of, of culture, if you will, and that's wrestling. I kept giggling when they kept saying NWA. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it was just a bunch of white people. I, thought it was, I just kept thinking that they were supposed to mean NWO. See, I know a little bit of wrestling. That, that's like the 90s. I know, I know. 90s, 2000, yep, there you go. Hey, I'm proud of you, I really am. Thank but you. the Von Erich family, which is basically Texas professional wrestling like um, royalty. Yep. Not to be confused with the Von Trapp family. <laughs> no, Von Trapp. Who Tra- did less wrestling. Yes. No, but they yeah. would have kicked their asses. Right, right. yeah, yeah. In Sweden. Could you imagine the Von Ar- Eric family taking on the Nazis? <sighs> Oof. One missing a foot. Mm-hmm. Well, it's funny. One be- with brain damage. Because the dad, who was featured in the beginning, 
what they underplay is his gimmick. Um, his wrestling gimmick is he was supposed to be a Nazi uh, general. Is yeah. that why his name was Fritz? Because he's German? Yeah. Well, no, no. Oh. His character is. His but, real it's name really, but his name is, Fritz. His name is Fritz. Yeah, okay, yeah. Which but is yes. German. Yes. yes. Oh, I see what they're doing. Oh. Yeah. So oh. he, he showed up and he was he showed up in a uh, swastika cape. That was his getup. Yikes. They, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they in Texas? Yeah. Huh, okay. Don't worry. Texas is lawless. Yeah, I guess it only so. has one star. No in one the, likes to the go 80s. there. Huh. Okay. Oh, that was man. a good joke. Come on. Oh, b- well, goodbye, Texas. Thank you very much for listening <laughs> to us. Uh, hey, great. We only have like three listeners in Texas, and they love us because it's it's uh, Video Store Rejects. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Video and they Store hate, Rejects. they hate Texas, too. Yeehaw. I, I would think that our demographic would be bigger. I mean, my last name is Rodriguez. I, I, I thought at least I would have seventeen to 18,000 family members. New Mexico. Yeah, they've they've been deported. Mm. They've been sent to to Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Living the dream. There you go. Someone has to serve the drinks. Or but anyways, Loka. I'm kidding. So the Von Trap or the Von. Yes, Reich, thank you. The Von Eric the, family. The, the Van Helsing family. Let's go. You know, it's funny. <laughs> I keep getting it wrong. And uh, like you, I grew up watching this stuff. I knew the story before watching the movie. Yeah, so did I. What was so, their real last name though? Atkinson. Um, it was like Ad Adkinson. Ad, yeah. Adkinson. Ad something. Yeah. Exactly. Just wondering. So it's a story. It's it's a story of the family of the Von Erichs, and you follow it's a story of the of Von Erich family. family. You, follow the, you follow the kids mainly um, in the late seventies and eighties. Pretty much, you follow the children, and you see the trials and tribulations and the highs and lows of their family and how they deal with it together or supposedly together. Um, <laughs> if you're a big fan of wrestling. I could do this all day. You don't realize that I'm doing this. I'm just thinking of words. Who was bringing up six very fit boys? All of them had hair helmets (laughs) like their father. The youngest one is dead. Actually, the oldest one. was four foot eight. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Keep going. But that's just. But that was funny. One half of the story. (laughs) Yeah. So. Their father was the worst father in the world. Not really. Did you not watch the Jacksons? <laughs> uh. Yeah, this movie should have been retitled Father of the Year. <laughs> uh, like Freddy versus Jason, like Von Eric versus Jacksons. Yeah, there you go. It's like, uh, but no. Um, so the uh, Von Eric, so it, it does a. In this film, it highlights Texas wrestling, professional wrestling, the time period of the 70s and 80s. It highlights the, it kind of tiptoes around the drug use and things like that to a degree. It does touch a little bit on the pressure, kind of like the uh, great uh, Santini-ish, if you will, where there's a lot of pressure from the father to perform and people were trying to do their best to live up and, and kind of get his approval. Um, and uh, the film itself attempts to do that. Short answer, and I want to talk to you guys more about this. I love the story, and it's rich and ripe for interpretation, but I feel that this film did not do it. I, it was all over the place in terms of what's going on. I knew the story, so therefore it wasn't hard for me. So to this is going to be very interesting because both of you know wrestling. Mm-hmm. You might not have liked it, but you know wrestling. You knew the story. Mm-hmm. I am completely on the opposite spectrum. I never watched wrestling. Mm-hmm. I don't know half the people you guys ever talk about. I've never heard of this these people before. Like I had read about this movie only because I saw pictures of what Zac Efron had done to prep for this role, and I'm like, he looks is he exactly playing exactly the same as he did in Baywatch? No, no he does no, not. He turned no, he himself did not. into a muscular. He almost killed himself and doing prepping for this role. No, he, he is did, he way did bigger. He did a wonderful job, but so, his, his character that he's playing is like six foot five. I understand and, that, yeah. but when I saw these pictures of him, and then when I found out Jeremy Allen White was in it too, I started reading on it. What is that about? He's a terrible actor, at least in this movie. Okay, we'll get to that. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, so I've never seen The Bear, so this is the only thing I've ever seen him do. Absolutely. And I agree with you on that. We'll get to that. So that's the only thing that I had heard about this movie is these people that are like trying to look like 
essentially like Ken dolls, right? Like I saw these pictures of them, like, what is this movie? Mm -hmm. So I have known, I know nothing about this movie. So I have a completely different point of view, I think, for both of you guys. And I think that's good that's, because yeah. I don't know wrestling. So I don't I can't compare. And I think a lot of people that are watching or have seen this movie are going to be like, well, they didn't tell the real story because I went into a deep dive yeah. about this family after this movie and they yeah. left a lot out. So people are going to be oh, they, they, left, they left this out. And they did this out. But. They, I'm looking they glossed over this. They they glossed over that. They they didn't. Control. I get that. Yeah. From my point of view, just not diving into this movie yet, but just a general movie from a moviegoer is to me this is not a wrestling movie. This no. is a family drama movie. Yes. Yeah. So I don't think you can go into it thinking this is like a documentary or uh, what you call it, you know, life story about the Von whatever family for wrestling. And I think a lot of people probably went in thinking that. But here's the thing. You can't tell the story of the Von Erichs without touching a wrestling. But they did. And I think well, that's one reason why I was okay with this, because the the brief It wasn't thing, a central right, story. Right. The brief thing, the way they shot the wrestling, because you guys know I don't like wrestling. I don't like fighting. I don't like boxing. I don't like bloody things like that. I don't like people getting beat up. Like That's why I didn't really want to watch the Rocky movies. I don't watch MMA fighting. I don't like that type of thing. I don't mind blood like in horror movies, but I don't want to watch two men beat each other up. I don't like that. I, I will look away. Really no, because I don't like that. I will look away because it's disgusting to me. The way that they stylized and cinematography fied, is that a word? But I just it made it now. up. The way they did the wrestling shots, I thought was beautiful because yeah. it wasn't like harsh wrestling. And it was like all like dark sometimes, like the like the color was. Muted. I, I, yes. Yeah. yeah. It was and, all orange. And yeah. And I never once looked away like, oh, I can't watch this. They're like all sweaty and veiny and they're like <laughs> popping each other's eyes out. And I don't want to watch this. What? It's professional wrestling. They don't pop each other's eyes out unless you're in Japan, and then it becomes a shoot. Uh, you there, know, what, there was an eye gouge scene. Yeah, yes. that's what I'm talking yes. about. You're correct. And some blood. There was some blood. You're correct. There's always blood. Yeah, yeah, but yeah I especially don't... if Ric Flair's involved. He Woo. always cuts himself. <laughs> but see, I didn't know that. Uh, Allison's our woo. Yeah, I our can't. Ric Flair I, can't woo. I, I can't reach that. I know I can't do that. Woo. Woo. Yeah. So I'm just saying that we're going to have completely different points of view, I think, on this. You mean we're going to have a real discussion? Yes. Mm. There you go. So I'm just going to go ahead and put away my Muppet talk, and uh, there you go. Your yeah. Muppet talk. Yeah, yeah. But no, um, I, it's just, to me, multiple issues that I have with it in terms of, I, I thought they spent way too, how they introduced the brothers, uh, there's a scene where they show the youngest brother, how his passion is music, and you basically spend 20 minutes in this uh, house party that his brother's band is playing in, and then you see the other uh, Von Eric brothers who are letting loose, mm -hmm. you know, cake stand kind of circa like varsity blues, if mm -hmm. you will, just to compare it for those who are watching out there. Um, and that's kind of the introduction where you see the director attempts to show the brotherly love that they have in a different aspect. In well, a, I mean, they did have, they did have, um, uh, David secretly taking them to band practice before that too. Yeah, yeah, that was sweet. Yeah, I mean they were they really loved each other. They did. Yeah, they no, that's no doubt. They were close. I mean, uh, they were probably made to. Well, because if you think about it, with having a hard ass fam uh, dad, you know, you you kind of commiserate with each other. You know, yeah, you you kind of hey, chin up, don't worry. Here's a nice pack on your eye, right? And yeah. so on, and so forth. And brothers, literally, yeah. Yeah, you, you you build a um, you build a camaraderie. You have pride with that, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and that aspect was was nice. It's just to me, again, it's kind of a similar issue that I have with the movie Napoleon. Is I'm a huge history buff as well, and I knew Napoleon's life very quickly. And if I didn't know history, I would be confused as shit. Mm -hmm. Now, were you, Allison, as someone who's not familiar mm -hmm. at all with the story? Were you confused at all? Like the bounce around, did you see the difference in, in the time? Did you could you tell that we're now in eighty five or eighty six? I could. Yeah, yeah. No. Because we have a sweater. He's, <laughs> it's a sweater. It's sweater. It's a sweater. I will say when the movie started and 
I thought I had seen previews for the movie, but when the movie started, it was in black and white. I'm like, oh, crap, A24, <laughs> did you give me another black and white movie? No. But nope, they didn't. They were just focusing on Fritz and when, you know, he was in his heyday and, and whatever. And When he did the um, Iron Claw. Yeah. Which and, we saw, like, Iron Claw, like, twice. Twice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sorry. I, yeah. 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 yeah well, please, twice please. and a practice. Yeah. yeah. Um, Which but that was the story after this. Go ahead. That was the first glimpse that I saw of how how complicated both of the parents are in their own right, especially the mother. Um, oh, the chick from News Radio. Yeah, Moira Moira, Moira Tierney. That voice that's hard to Better say. Better than me. I'm She's even, um yeah. yeah like just she was. I have a lot to say about her. She was just very complicated. Um, but yeah, everything was just you know raise it up to God and God will deliver and God will help us. And I don't know. That was a, like, the first scene you saw of her. And mind your father. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, did you like that character? I, I'm trying to get a feel from for you. It Here, sounds like I felt I felt bad for her, um, but. I mean, obviously, I felt bad for the entire family. This family is cursed like the Kennedys, right? I mean, that's just like... Well, if you actually do a deep dive in terms of why they're quote-unquote cursed, they're not cursed. They got uh, substance abuse issues. Well, yeah, you can see that. But the fact that this... So so they had six sons, even mm-hmm. though they only yeah. addressed five in this movie. Do we know why they didn't address the sixth child? Uh, the they same, probably didn't sign off on it. The same oh. way, the same way uh, Ozzy Osbourne <laughs> never never had like the other kid uh, that's in his family on the Osbournes, or, or the same way that. But the other uh, one, the sixth one, is dead. So yeah. Um, so he, the one that they didn't show because it was basically almost a derivative because mm-hmm. he was a smaller, tubbier uh, one that actually was known as quote unquote better wrestler. He just didn't have the size. Mm. So he kind of bounced around here and there and then eventually off to himself too, which, I mean, that's just horrible. I just, I felt for her like, okay. So in one of the oh, yeah. scene, the dress scene, when she was sitting there for the fourth funeral, the third funeral, and she's just losing her and mind. She's just sitting there staring at this black dress and Kevin's wife, um, played by Lily James, who's really good, but she didn't get enough acting in this movie. No. She can't. She comes in and she's like, we got to go. I forget the mom's name. And she was just like, I can't wear this dress again. Like, I just, that yeah. broke my heart. Like, you as a mother, you were about to bury your fourth child, which you should never bury your kids before you, and yeah. you are worried that other people are going to see that you just wore the same black dress three other times and you can't put it on. That just, I don't know, that broke my heart. I just felt so bad for this woman. Well, she's transitioning her focus rather than dealing with her grief. Yeah. On, yeah, yeah she doesn't know how to grief. Yeah. yeah, she definitely yeah. doesn't know how to grief. And neither did the father. Um, oh, well, the Jesus father Christ. is, okay, so I have... Oh man, I see good and bad in this father, and it was like Where so complicated. Good? Well, I, I my daddy issues will come out. So, uh, <laughs> I don't have I daddy. I don't have daddy issues. So, but. okay, telling your kids you're not allowed to cry, telling your kids to be sure. a man—that's horrible. It that's is terrible parenting. But, but that's, that was the time. Yeah, period. so I, I mean, had to take I, myself out of that. I had to take myself out of that. Was his age? That was his time, and that's where he was growing up. So I was like, man, this guy is just. He's ruthless. All he cares about is living his life through his children, clearly. Right, exactly. Um, but then that Christmas scene, and there's certain scenes where he just, like, he turned into, like, a decent human being sometimes. Well, so I was like, what is this guy's deal? Well, he was he was, a, he was a good family man, mm-hmm. but he didn't know how to handle his family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he was good in some regards, like when when his son killed himself. I mean, which one? Well, no, the one by there, the tree. There was uh, only one suicide, or yeah. there was only one visible suicide. Yeah. In the movie. Well, yeah, but the other one killed himself. Yeah, he overdosed. Yeah, but, you know, You're talking about when um, the bear Carrie. Died. Yeah, yeah. Well, when he, when Kevin almost tried to kill him and choke him out. No, 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 no. The, he, the guy he almost the, had him. The, <laughs> the guy. The guy that, uh, sorry, the because how they morphed the story, they basically took one person's story and made it, yeah, but anyways, um, the one what? that died on the tree. Yeah. Yeah, Carrie. Yeah. And Kevin comes running to him, and he's like, "You, I told you to watch him, and he started choking his father. Yeah, and his father's did, like, he yeah. came to you first. How did his father handle that well? Yeah, well, how did no, he handle No, 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 where you saw the breaking down of him, because oh. he, he was, you saw vulnerability. Yeah. 
a little bit. Not, so, not enough. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, the only the only person the only person in that family that grew aside from Kevin was the mother. At the end well, of the movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well. And even she never broke down and cried. And I hated in the beginning when Kevin came to talk to her. And he was like, I need to talk to you. And she was like, that's what your brothers are for. And I'm just like, what are you doing? You're a shit mom. Yeah. Like, she, she's a different kind I of mom. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. They were both two different. And it would be interesting to see how those two grew up and how they met. I don't believe that he was ever physically abusive to her. No. I worried at the end when he came home. And he was like, what's for dinner? And she's like, I didn't cook anything. And I'm like, oh, shit, he's going to go off on her. He's like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm painting. And he's like, why isn't there any food? And she's like, I wasn't hungry. And then he sat down with her. And I think at that moment, he like became human. Like he he was like, OK, I'm just going to sit here with my wife. And yeah. so I saw little glimpses of him. He just he he needed help. But right he, after when Kevin sold to the WWF, his father Tried to try to talk him out of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He was clearly well, living out his yeah life. Well, because also you gotta remember he and that whole ranking thing just drive me crazy. Yeah, you don't well, do that to your kids. Yeah. Well, he's the favorite. You're number two. You're number three. You're number four. Yeah. And hey, that can change. Yeah. Well, right now Deion Sanders does the same exact thing for his kids. That's Good. Horrible. Another sports guy who who should who could burn in hell. That's horrible. Oof. Ooh. But uh, hey, look! Don't the, get me started on worshiping sports heroes. Well, we're not talking about no, that, we're, though. We're not. But, but that's what. Okay. Well, okay. So with, why, with why the, are you getting upset? We're not talking about worshiping well, no, sports passion, heroes. Passion. That's but, what I'm saying, though. That's what I'm saying, though. I mean, like people look up to these people. Well, I know, but we're not talking about that. We're just talking about that's the way that they grew the up. I understand yeah. that, and I'm saying they're not good people. So they shouldn't be they shouldn't be put on a pedestal. But here's the thing, you you only see a part of it. That's one of the reasons why there's that saying is you never meet your idols, you never meet your heroes. Uh they're going to disappoint you. I mean, at the end of the day, I've never met one comic book writer that was such a bad person. Okay. I okay. Fair counterpoint. Um I hear Stanley might have been a dick when he was older, but eh, I don't know. He's not a writer, he's a he's a thief. Yeah. Anyways, um, so with with the Von Erichs, it, it, to me, I can relate to a degree because my pops, you know, was a colonel. He dressed right, dressed, you know, you know, make certain before you show up, you you represent the family. You're wearing my rank on your shoulders. You know, when I would get in a fight with a kid, my my dad would say, you know what, you're you're ruining my career to a degree. He didn't say that verbatim. Um, but it was like you're dis- not disappointed. He, mom, yeah. And but anyways, but so, there's a difference to, between discipline and compassion. Yeah. So this father had no compassion. It, it, he was a different cut of cat. A different time. I don't mean to, to completely he white, whitewash he, it. He, he's not a father. He should never have had kids. Mm. I mean, Quake, Quakers, Amish people have, have kids, and they they're stern. I just think that he but they was follow trying. they follow a doctrine. They're not following. They're not. They're not creating their own doctrine. I feel like he loved the kids. He just didn't know how to show them the, like the way that we're used to. Like and that's again, yeah. He had no compassion. This almost would have been a better like miniseries, if you will, because that way you could have a whole episode devoted to. I can see that to Fritz. Uh, you could have a whole episode devoted to. The mom, her backstory. Blah, yeah, they blah, clearly blah. have backstories going on, and the yeah. the kids, like even when they were little, having backstories yeah. going on. But especially the one that died. <laughs> Which one? The the little the one, little, the, yeah. the, the junior, the, the first first one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, to me, it was just, oh man, like it, it was. I didn't feel satisfied, like when when the movie ended. It was. You know, it, it touched on so much in such a little time period. Um, the inclusion of Ric Flair, woo! Mm-hmm. You know that that was interesting because there are so many main, well-known people that came through there. So that I think that was a representation of the people that came through and the type of feeling that they brought in the big league and gave a hint of, of stuff outside of Texas. Um, 
you know, I liked how it represented the the barnstorming of the different uh, locations. I liked how it represented the the main stage of, of being a main platform, like Texas Stadium. That was pretty cool. Um, you know, certain things were really excellent, but again, it was. I was hoping for more. I thought it was going to be much more poetic, much more strong, and, and just kind of miss the mark a little bit, at least to me. Um, well, the funny thing is, everyone told me before seeing this movie that it was super heavy, and that mm-hmm. I was prepared to cry, and I didn't feel one thing other than anger throughout this whole movie. Mm-hmm. I felt no sadness. I felt no feel of loss, because it was all the father's fault, and I just could not get past that, even based, even even when Kevin was trying to figure shit out, I couldn't, mm-hmm. I felt no sadness whatsoever in this movie. I, knowing the uh, backstory I, and some of the deeper things, it wasn't the father's fault. The father didn't uh, have the kid in Japan OD. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, uh, I can know, see that they Japan have, I can see sick. that they have a lot of issues, but I don't necessarily mm-hmm. know if all of the deaths were the father's fault. Well, even even Mike, he he died in a car accident from overdosing. He didn't, he didn't just OD and die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then the other guy, the guy, is that the guy in Tokyo that had the stomach thing? Yeah, David. Yeah, David. He got that from drinking or drugs? I forget. Uh, drinking, I think. Yeah, drink. He was always drinking all the time and throwing up blood at the wedding. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, it did the father have a substance abuse problem when he was younger? Was he into steroids and stuff? No, I mean steroids weren't that prevalent in the forties and fifties. Oh, yeah. Uh, but because I never, we never really saw him drinking. I don't know. Um, that I don't. Yeah, know. he was a very straight laced. Yeah, yeah. Person aside from um, being you know, he set. was he was the head of operations for that uh, wrestling company. Yep, like, for the NWA. Now there's an interesting story. So uh, I love hearing like the behind the scenes stuff on professional wrestling, and I one do of the too. it's fascinating. Oh, it really is. But one of the guys was talking about uh, when he was in WWF, he was talking about going to wrestle for the Von Erichs. Um, and he was asking some of the guys, you know, what is it like? And one of the uh, wrestlers held up his hand and goes like this and holds five fingers. And he goes, oh, OK, I, I got to work with the Iron Claw. I can do that. Not a big deal. He goes, nope, that's how much you're getting paid if you're lucky. And that's on a good night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, oof. So. That kind of tells we you. We learned that from Spider Man. <laughs> well, that that's that is is something where you kind of get an underlying thing where they they cheaped out on talent, they mm-hmm. didn't pay talent, so on and so forth, and that will explain why some people came in and out, uh, so on and so forth, paid their dues and then left. Uh, but that that wasn't just a Von Eric thing. That was a lot of the territories. Yeah. So the one thing I really liked was um, after the the Ric Flair match. Mm-hmm. And Ric Flair came back and he was all just like, he was into the whole pageantry of it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the one thing I did enjoy because there are still people out there that don't understand that it's choreographed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know that until I was about 11. It's, I never say it's fake because it's not fake, but no. it's choreographed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, you know it's going to win. It's. it's it's you a know soap the opera. It's, kn- a, it's yeah. a soap opera. Yeah, you know the outcome. You you know the outcome. It's a physical thing. Like uh, there's Dark Side of the Ring. If you ever yeah. get a chance to I watch love it, love that show. They had a recent episode on Sensational Sherry, which is a female wrestler, also manager. Blah blah blah. She wasn't involved in this movie, uh, but uh, she had the saying. It goes. Everyone says uh, wrestling is fake. It's like my back hurts from how many times it hit the the unforgiving mat. Oh, sure. Yeah, I. Take a bump. I I, with the broken glass that came onto my face, you know, I got scars that the concealer can't cover. Yeah. Um, you know, I got barbed wire scratches and, and I've had a, a tetanus, you know, so on and so forth for the things I've endured just for the applause. The ropes just bruise you the first oh, few man. times. We yeah. watched Glow. We know. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm still pissed they never <laughs> finished that damn show. Oh, yeah. man, that show was so good. God, bring back Glow. 
Um, I liked how Ric Flair came back in after he won, you know, bloody face and all. And, you know, they're asking Kevin, they're like, what happened? You know, the dad and what's his name? Carrie, like, what happened? And Ric Flair's like, hey, you want to go get a beer? Like, it was (laughs) just like. That's what I just said. He came back and he was like all excited about it. Yeah. You were talking about the pageantry. But I was saying like he was just just like. Let's just go have a beer, like. Yeah, well, and, what I meant was he wasn't angry or oh, anything. Okay. About it. Yeah. Well, yeah, that that's, but that's professional. So that's a little s- snippet of what it's really like behind the scenes. It's like okay, because it's professional. It's a right. job. It's yeah. a soap opera. Yeah. Okay. Well, the job's over. You want to have a beer yeah. after work? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You know, um, is there any place around here to go get a beer? It's like yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm out. Blah blah blah. But no, it's um, you know, Kevin was a downer. <laughs> Well, if you see him in interviews, he's a downer. I know. Well, Kevin, that, I mean, he was a virgin when he met Pam. Yeah. Like, what? Like, his whole entire life was the sport. Yep. Yeah. Everything. Well, and he wanted so bad to, again, be that, that uh, star for his dad. Yes. And, and, and that's the where championship. I thought the movie was going to go really good because the opening scene shows them doing their promo work. Mm-hmm. Uh, promo work, for those who aren't in the know, is the stuff that you do to prep in to really showcase the match. You know, come come Saturday night, Tino never, Santana, just you and me are going to be in the ring. We couldn't do any of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rule you. Yeah. Let me do that again. And then his brother's laughing the whole time. Yeah, like, you, you think you, you think can you do can, it? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I can do better. Sure can. Um, I but, actually mm-hmm. bawled crying in the end scene. That kids. was just that just that was just horrible. I mean, he first of all, the way that they had him go down the river, which was just like a little homage to when they were hanging out in the weird like that was a good scene in the beginning when they picked him up from practice and they went down the little river and yeah. it's like they're actually just hanging out. They're like just they, brothers they're, being they're brothers. brothers hanging out in the summer and they're not worrying about wrestling. And then when he goes and he meets, he's like, you know, I'm going to walk with my brothers. Okay, so he has both of his legs. And then he gives him a hug. And then he's like, is, I forget, I don't know the little one's name, Paul. I don't know, is he here? Junior. Yeah, and then he comes up, he's like, you must be my older brother. I mean, I was mm-hmm. I was literally just bawling. I'm like, this is just so horrible. I cannot believe this poor family lost all of their children but one. And then I love at the end of those movies where it tells you like what's going on now. And the fact that he lived, Kevin lived on the farm and he was still married to Pam after 40 years and they have like 20 grandchildren and everybody lives together. And I was like, oh, so then I started and my one deep of the dive. grandchildren could fly. <laughs> what? Oh, the, the family portrait. Oh. The yeah. And then I started doing my deep dive. So the two boys that were in the movie, his two kids grew up to be wrestlers. And the one she was pregnant with was, was a girl. And she grew up to be a really big time wrestler who just retired. Huh. Yeah. 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 I don't know. That that ending just got me. Well, which one was Liesel? <laughs> Liesel? Liesel. Um, I love that there was two refrigerators. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's what it means to live with four grown sons and a and giant, they have to consume so many calories and a giant yeah. husband. I mean, she was putting out like twenty four biscuits at one time. Yeah. My God. They were probably Serving going bowl through of eggs. yeah two dozen eggs, like bacon. I was just looking there, like, oh my God, they Give have two me. fridge. Give me that funk, that sweet, that nasty, that gushy stuff. I can barely keep up with one child, one boy, let alone five boys. Ah. No, thank you. No. I thought that was funny. Um, going back to what you touched on earlier about the actors. So I thought this was hands down Zach's, uh, Zach Efron's best role he's ever done. I, I agree. Um, strangely enough, I liked him a lot, too, in the shitty remake of Firestarter. I don't really remember I how he was. he was great in uh, The Greatest Showman, even though I did it was too. a musical. But, but he, yeah, this was yeah. this was him showing his acting He could chops. actually act. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what he did to prep for this role was extreme and ridiculous. He was disgusting looking to me. I'm sorry. Oh, he yeah, he's just, all veiny. Oh, it's just too much for me. And the hair, oof, it was Yeah, it was a the, lot. the hair. He just looked like Prince Adam. Yeah, and and the, the, the tans and the... I liked how he perfected him. It was very believable with how socially awkward he was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And when you see interviews of the actual guy he was portraying, he, his interviews are even rough. And he's just being himself. He's not doing shoes like... Yeah, and that's when Carrie he showed up and uh, 
you know, didn't, yeah. didn't much. Well, do. then and he played like, him it, to a T. And you can see that also when he's in that one tag team match, and he's like, hey, yeah. you know, and they win, and he's like, yay. Yeah. Yeah. Because he has to be on for the camera, but he's just like, but, all right. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, uh, you can go back on YouTube and see, like, the actual wrestling matches mm-hmm. that they're they're recreating mm-hmm. and yeah he's he's stiff like that he's yeah not, i mean he, they did a good job with the actors like getting them to kind of look like them outside of jeremy allen white i mean jeremy allen white is a short actor and that guy was like six foot something i don't know why they chose him to be carrie yeah he's short i don't ugly. i don't get it so yeah and carrie was not ugly like I, he was yeah. actually one of my favorite wrestlers because remember I was born in Austin, Texas, so he was known as Texas Tornado when he went oh, to WWE, mm-hmm. uh, WWF at the time period. I and, remember uh, Texas Tornado. Yeah, he yeah it was really cool because his finishing move was um, you know the shot put where you, you turn around. Well, his finishing move was a tornado uh, twist where he would turn around twice and then hit the guy. Okay. Only in professional wrestling. If we're actually in a bar fight and a guy turns <laughs> around, I'm hit him right square in the junk. Uh. Bam! <laughs> Why are you spinning? Oh, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> hit him one time in the junk, then as he goes down for the junk, hit him one time with a knee in the face, push him down and say, you're going to pay him my bar tap. Thank you. And that, listeners, is how Roman wins <clears throat> fights in Texas. Huh. Yeah! Drinking and fighting, fighting and drinking. <laughs> yeah, he deserved a more complicated role. It didn't show off any acting. Lily James, she deserved a little bit more. I don't know. They, clearly, they had more of a relationship because they stayed mm-hmm. together for so long. It just seemed like they focused everything on Zach. Like, let's highlight Zach and well, everything. But she did a great job of because without her, he doesn't have a platform to showcase a lot of the awkwardness. I mean, she did a wonderful job yeah. of being that straight guy, if you will. Um, and allow the joke of performance, and I mean this in terms of straight guy versus um, um, but, 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 the 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 shit guy. I can't remember the terminology at this point. Sorry, got about this guy. Straight guy. Yeah, in terms of comedy. Yeah, comedy. You have the straight yeah. man, and you have the Joker. Yeah, there you go. So in terms of this, like Fred Willard's always the straight man. Yeah, Eben and Costello. But. Yeah. but- she they needed to dive more into her because she I don't know. It's she, not called White Claw, it's called Iron Claw. It's not a girl movie. It's about the okay. boys. All right. Ha. Well, they they Sorry. needed to get more into her character. Yeah, yeah, they needed to make the movie like five hours long. Absolutely. No, they needed to do a miniseries. No kidding. I know a good looking guy who's six foot two who will probably be portrayed by someone who's four foot eight. I mean, they could have just dad. got Jake Gyllenhaal in there. He was already ready after doing Roadhouse. No kidding. It's true. He's Bring got the him blonde in hair there. from Barbie. Nope, that's Ryan Gosling. <laughs> I can't tell the difference. <laughs> I mean, you could bring him in there, too. I mean, you know, whatever. And, and but Mom was happy, huh? All the close-ups on Zac Efron's face, I kept thinking it was Chris Pine. They have really? the same face, oh. if you look at it. I'll have to look at it again. <laughs> they don't look alike. They have the same face. Huh. Okay. <laughs> What's the difference? Same structure. You mean structure. the same jawline yeah. and everything? I'll have to look at that again. I mean, they're both Caucasian. And I was they have thinking, eyes I was thinking, I was thinking that they could... He could have been one of the brothers, but like, no, he's too old. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple guys that you could put in there, but no, at the end of the day. Yeah. I just, yeah. Having knockoff Willy Wonka in there was just something I didn't <laughs> want to see. He's the ugliest man since Norman Reedus. Put Matthew McConaughey And he, that's in the there. funny thing is he's not, he's not that unattractive. He was just he was in this movie. I don't know. Like, I don't know if they he's put extra. Unattractive. He's really not though. Like in the bear, he's not unattractive and he's got a really good physique. Maybe that's why they brought, I really can't figure out why they put him in this movie. Yeah. Maybe because he was like popular hmm. at the time. They wanted that English market. I don't know. But he's not English. Which one of them are English? One of the dudes is English or Australian. From what? One of the, the guys who play Von, the Von Eric boys. One of them is English hmm. or, or I have no idea. I have no, no idea. Anyways. Uh, I really liked I really liked the guy who played Mike. He did a good job. He was the one who played the guitar? Yeah. Yeah, he didn't look like any of the brothers. Right. And he looked just like his picture. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just, to me, uh, I don't know, man. Like, uh, I think if they would have focused it a little bit on, on there's another way to, to go about this film, but they chose to do this wide spread grand wide brush uh, of story where they're including 
the family throughout the years, whereas if they would have just focused on maybe like one week of the family. But how can you do that? They all didn't die within one week. <laughs> well, no, it, it's just you, you focus on the, the dichotomy or the, the relationship with the family itself, and then then it would be shocking with the prologue or the... Uh, oh, the, yeah, you could, do like, you could do like flashbacks and stuff. Like, I just think it should have been a miniseries. 100%. I think it shouldn't have been made as a movie at all. Well, miniseries. Yeah, yeah no, like, a, like a series or something. Yeah. I don't even think it... Is it really that important? Um, it, well, apparently it is because and again, I don't know these people, but at the end big. they were oh, huge. Yeah, I know. I, so I think this is bringing to light the people to the people who don't know them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had never heard of these people before. I didn't realize how big they were. Yeah, I think it's because I knew so much that I was like, this isn't a big news movie to be right. putting out. Well, yeah. But- in terms of wrestling, like there's about maybe. Like the Von Erich story, I think is very interesting. However, it's probably number twenty on my list. I mean, but maybe there's a couple of wrestling people that are really big fans and they want to see that. I mean, they already know about it, but mm-hmm. can't you say that about a lot of things? Like, well, I mean, I'd um, rather see a movie about the Hart family. Who's the Hart family? Owen and 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 Brett and are they wrestlers? Yes. Oh, well, Owen, maybe they'll Brett, make one. It, well, it's basically the Canadian version of the Von Erichs. Yeah, yeah, oh. without the dying. Well, one. Well, well, one he, really bad one. He repelled. <laughs> uh, I am laughing just out of a nervous laugh, not because I'm actually finding it funny. Um, yeah, it Owen, was Owen. Owen's. It was repel, a. Mi- he was going to come from the ceiling, and his harness let go, mm-hmm. and he fell, fell to his death. during a during a uh, pay per view event. Mm-hmm. Yep, and uh, they went to commercial. Well, they didn't go to go to commercial. They went away, and they came back and kept going. Hmm. With his divot in the in the mat and blood still there. I mean, it's pay per view. You got to get your money. Exactly. <laughs> Vince McMahon's like, nope. You're gonna keep. You're gonna keep wrestling. Well, well they, um, and that's one of the things I love watching on YouTube is what's called shoots, um, and, and that's, ladders. Well, yes, shoots and ladders is a kids game, but that's not important right now. Um, it's a corn song. That too. Uh, uh, so what during the uh, shoots on YouTube? They give information like it's like tell tell me about Vince McMahon. What do you think of him? And it's like uh, he's a shrewd businessman. He's a modern modern day uh, uh, Bart or P. T. Barnum. Oh, he's an asshole. Who Vince McMahon? Yeah. Um, but here's the thing: you need assholes in life. Oh no 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 no. He was an asshole back then. He is despicable now with what he's doing. Mm-hmm. So we yeah. won't we won't talk about that. I don't know how that man's not in jail right now. Money. Non-disclosure agreements. <laughs> yeah, but there's proof of what he's been doing in text, so. Well, yeah. I don't know. But I know anyways, his daughter, that's... Stephanie. I remember her. See, yeah. I know a couple of people. Hey, I know, go. like, the newer people. Like, the one that was married to John Cena. The okay. twins. The Bella twins. Mm-hmm. Oh. What kind of wrestling fan are you? One that stopped in the 90s. You, you don't know. Oh, well, no, no. I've been catching He didn't, though. I know. I was talking That's what he's saying. <laughs> if you get a chance, watch the documentary on Peacock, uh, the, the Wyatt, Br- Bray Wyatt. Wyatt. Mm-hmm. Highly, highly recommend it. It was right up your alley. I bet you you would love it. I love all those wrestling documentaries. Yeah. I don't know why. I'm not into wrestling anymore, but I think it's because I grew up yeah. watching and Hanging out with wrestlers. Well, yeah, all my here, life. here in Tampa. I mean, I'm yeah, not, you, no, I, I mean, I was family friends with with Dusty, Dusty and Dustin Rhodes. Uh, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm in the Undertaker's will. Technically, I was a, I was a, a, a witness. <laughs> uh, I've had multiple dinners with the the Nasty Boys. Oh well, I, your personal life is your personal life, man. <laughs> uh, Okay. It well, was funny because the first time they came over for dinner, we actually had to go back to the store and get more meat. Oh, because they were yeah. getting really nasty. No, because they, they were giant people. Yeah, no, no. I I met Brian, our, our uh, yeah, no, Jerry and Brian. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the blonde guy. Yeah, who's Brian. from Pennsylvania. Yeah. I met him. Uh, yeah, I don't know him, but no, uh, because he used to go to the chop and he drinks a lot. <laughs> drinks a lot but anyways that they they weren't in this film no neither um, was typhoon who i knew well too you mean uh tugboat tugboat yeah, yeah he is a good dude but yeah. that, let's talk about it uh, <laughs> off the podcast or have a wrestling podcast there you go um, that's the extent of my wrestling knowledge 
Oh, man. Uh, the real life people. Randy Savage's brother, Lanny. Uh, oh, and I did watch I did watch Randy Savage die. Yeah, it was just down the street. Yeah, I was I was at the light when he died. Oh, my heavens. <laughs> I that, saw I saw the crash. Well, that's a movie that I think would be fantastic is, yeah, is the, Randy Savage. Yeah. The first uh, episode of Dark Side of the Ring. Oh, man. That oh, Allison's checked out. She has. <laughs> She's pulling up, me. I'm looking up taglines. Yeah. So, uh, Iron Claw. I almost said White Claw. <laughs> White Claw the movie. A uh, White Claw the movie serving. I mean, why moms. not? There's a there's a flaming hot Cheeto movie. There's oh a Pop Tart movie coming out. Tetris. I'm surprised you haven't talked about the montage. Montage. Oh, the Rush montage. Fuck yeah, Tom oh, Sawyer. Okay, yeah, actually that was pretty cool. It was the entire song. It was yeah. the longest montage ever. Well, they have to pay for that royalty, man. It's like might as well. One day away, I mean, mean stride. Today's I think night. my main negative with this movie was mm-hmm. we never saw like a good human connection with the brothers. Like it was all like it wasn't enough. I agree. I see um, that. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I agree. And that's, there's like it's like right on the precipice yes. of it happening. Like I loved when they were watching what's his name like play because mm-hmm. at first I was like they're gonna look at him and be like, "This isn't cool. This isn't wrestling. You suck. You're not a good. You know, we don't like this rock and roll." But they were all like, "Yeah, he's really good and he's into it and we yeah. like it." And I'm like, "Okay." Yeah. And then it was just like, "Let's go into the next thing." Yeah. And when they got when Kevin got married and they were all dancing and stuff like that, I'm like, yes, let's all dance together and yeah. love on each other. Doing no, mind dancing. You yep, know, it was no, cute. no, because wasn't it like a wasn't it a John Dever song? Yeah, I was or like, something? got him a country yeah. boy. I was like, yeah, let's all do. Nope, we're gonna just go throw up blood in the bathroom and then you know we're gonna get burgers. And I just needed a little bit more. Like it would mm-hmm. always take you there because those boys should have united not only because of wrestling but because of their parents. Yes, they should have had each other's backs. And then as every one of them started dying, the last two should have been like thick as thieves. And right. it was just, I don't know. Like you would always just see these little, like when Carrie and Kevin were practicing in the ring, when Carrie lost his leg and he was like, dude, you got to like, just take it easy. And he's like, I don't want to take it easy. Like, yeah, it would just like, it was just right on the cusp of them, like having this breakdown and, and then emotional. He, and yeah. then, <sighs> and then he turned and like, if, if you want to, if you want to do it, you have to get up. Right. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, okay. Like, I guess you guys aren't as close as you want us well, to believe. And that, that's kind of one of my grievances that I touched on in the beginning, but you did a much better job explaining it <laughs> than I did. Go figure. Um, where, you know, you, you jump around and, and when it shows the brothers in the party scene where you see uh, the... Uh, Michael? Yeah, mm-hmm. Michael playing guitar and mm-hmm. then Carrie doing a keg stand and, right. and, and things like that. It's like, okay, that really isn't... It's showing. It's representing the friendship that they had and how they're always together. Mm-hmm. And I get it. You're in a two-hour movie, so you can only do so much. If you right, will. we're proving why this should have been a, a, a miniseries. miniseries. Absolutely. Even when Kevin had his first baby, which that happened really fast, right? We yeah. got married, and then all of a sudden you see a baby, and I'm like, oh, okay. And they're leaving the hospital. <laughs> yeah, like I didn't. I didn't. I wanted the brothers. I wanted the brothers to be there, like holding their nephew. I'm so proud of you. I yeah. wanted the grandma to be. I mean, grandma was watching. I never saw this like loving. Really, that father should have been like, "Holy crap! This is my first grandson. I hear I'm gonna bring him up to be a wrestler. Anything. I needed anything from them. I needed them to love on the daughter more and yeah. like show. And then she has another kid, and then she's pregnant yeah. again. And it's like you could." You guys are just like throwing all this stuff around that you could like really like develop into this nurturing story story and you're not doing it. I guess I've watched nurturing shows too long. No, no. I need this to be parenthood. Well, you're (laughs) you're coming with this with a great eye and great perspective uh, because, again, you you don't know the stories. You're not too invested into this type of aspect. Yeah, Mm -hmm. you're cognizant. You know some pop culture, all Mm -hmm. that fun jazz. But... um, Yes, thank you it, it, for it. Just could have been more for a twenty four, a twenty four. But I do give well, that, it. That'd be a good tagline. Yeah, yeah. But I do just give it more for a twenty four. I do like the. I thought this was going to be. Oh God, like it's going to be like so much wrestling, and ooh, I'm not going to like it. And they did a really tactful job of the wrestling shots yeah. for me as a non wrestler viewer. And I can appreciate yeah. that. It, it it showed a lot of like the art of wrestling. Yes, that's good. It was like a, it was like artsy, artsy wrestling. Yeah, like again, you touch really you you hit a awesome part. The uh, Tom Sawyer, 
mm-hmm. where you see the brothers, and that, that was their famous move when they're doing three-way matches, where they all, if you've ever tried to coordinate at the same time doing a jump kick at the same time and hitting mm-hmm. a target, that's hard. I mean, I do that every night. <laughs> that's my finishing move when I'm making the whoopee. Yeah. Speaking speaking of, of everyone together, <laughs> there was one scene. Thank you for getting me off of that one. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but there was one scene. I think it was the end of the montage where it faded out and everybody was in the shot. Yeah. And yeah. then the father walked in yeah. in the shot. So all five of them yes, were all Yes, it was in the one. end of the montage. That was Ooh, so yes. damn cool. On the mm-hmm. It was a good montage aside from the song. When you fade out, you know that was their song. Okay. They were playing that. They played Tom Sawyer throughout right. that whole movie. Yeah, twice. Yeah, that's the whole movie to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like well, a fifteen-minute song. Yeah, there you go. I'm just kidding. But yes, I yes, that was like their way of saying like they're all a family. Yeah. They're uh-huh. all together, yeah. and then the poor mom wasn't in the <laughs> montage at all. <laughs> that poor mom. Oh. God love her, she, having six it, boys. In her defense, she had to make the 24 fucking biscuits. I oh mean, my Christ God, my that poor woman. All she wanted to do was paint. That's right. And then uh, she but, forgot why she painted. I know, she didn't even tell them that she painted. That was her house. So, yeah. like, so, so, those boys didn't know anything about their mom. Nope. Well, and that's that's symbolic of the relationship yep. where it's like, okay, you, you really didn't invest into certain parts. No, and I think that's why I was so like, I don't know. I was like tortured by her character because it was just so sad. I was like, look at these beautiful boys you have. You have a beautiful family. You're a mother. You're losing these kids left and right. Mm -hmm. You don't, I don't feel you know enough about them because you don't let them talk to you when they need help. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't, like everything was just, I don't know if maybe she was in the mindset of these are boys and the boys get raised by the dad because they're going to be wrestlers and I'm just the provider well, I that's that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. she yeah. wasn't a mother; she was a well, provider. Uh, yeah. I mean, during during that time period, that was kind of at that's least what it, yeah. What it says the, in the Bible. Well, no, <laughs> you you handle you handle the uh, boys, and I'll handle the girls. You know, so on and so forth. That's why she kept getting pregnant. She wanted that damn girl. <laughs> she wanted something well, to do. Uh-huh. We we know friends who are like that. It's yeah. like okay, they they really wanted a boy, so yeah. they're going to have, and now you have six. And that's girls, what you get because you, you just keep on keeping yeah. on, yeah. and then the Lord took us away. No kidding. Well, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so tagline. Oh, yeah, there was one tagline. I don't understand why these movies are... Maybe A24 only gives one tagline. They don't need taglines. They just need the A24 on there. This was Sons, Brothers, Champions. It's not bad. murder. (laughs) Suicide. (laughs) They got that killing, uh, uh, that killing uh, ingredient. Oh, that's another part. I'm sorry. This is... So, was this after? This was after the scene when Carrie went met to meet the other kids. Yes. So mm-hmm. the one that really took me over the edge, where I was literally like, "Oh my god!" Okay, so Kevin's out there watching his two sons, Marshall, and I forget what the other one's name was, play, and he's crying. And they come up and they're like, "Daddy, what's what's the matter?" And he's like, "Oh, nothing, nothing." And he's like, "No, you're crying." And he's like, "Yeah, I'm sorry. Don't, I'm sorry about that. You didn't see me cry. Yeah. Don't worry about that." And he's like. No, he's like, it's okay to cry. We cry. And I'm like, perfect. Like, this is you breaking the mold yep. of your father and you being another father. This is your this is your moment. And he's like, okay, well, you know, I what are you crying about? Oh, I used to be someone's brother. And I'm like, oh, my God, you're not. You, yeah, you're not. You're still a brother, but you're not anyone's brother anymore because they're all dead. Like, this yeah. is horrible. And then they're like, we can be your brother, dad. And I just lost it. And I think it's because, one, I'm an only child. One, I have a son. And two, I have a son that's an only child. And it really affected me. Like, it really got to me. And I was just like, this is just a beautiful ending to this movie because that just showed that he broke the cycle of what his father had instilled in him. Because you can have crappy parents. And when you become a mother or a father, you have to decide if you're going to continue on with what your parents did or if you're going to break the cycle and be something new and that's what he chose to do mm-hmm. and I just think that was just a beautiful ending and you know what that's a fantastic take on that I I missed it I think I was just so ticked off with the stuff that wasn't there um, and how they whitewashed over a lot of information um, to me in some ways they went full on Disney in terms of telling the story it's like Hey, we're going to do Pocahontas, but instead of Pocahontas, we're going to do the Von Eric story. Here you go. All right, here we go. And that's kind of almost how it felt to a degree, where it's like you're you're telling some of the story, yeah, but that wasn't 
That's not. But I, I think, think they had to because they wanted to bring more people into this movie. Yeah, I think more people are going to look into the family now. Yes. And I think if you went too hardcore in it, people would be like, this is too much wrestling. And too, I didn't sign up for all of this. Then I would watch that. What is it called? Behind the Curtain? What is it uh, called? Dark, Dark Side of the Ring. Of the Ring. I Highly close. recommend, by the way. Dark Side of the Ring. No, thank you. I think I'm good. Well, no, <laughs> no, it's no, actually it's, really I'm just good kidding. Yeah, no, no it, everybody, it I know, on, everybody um, keeps saying, did you see Dark Side of the Ring? No, I haven't. But okay. But do you see where I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if I wanted that, then now I can watch that. If I I just wanted this like movie with Zac Efron in it where he's practically naked, you wrestling. Here's that movie. Two which, for two you know, on movies that we reviewed so far with naked people. There's more way. naked people in the last one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. A twenty four. We like naked people. <laughs> but so I see where Songs you and dogs. you guys well maybe not Adam but you wanted more. Yeah. Of the wrestling and what you know of the story, but that's not not the wrestling, but what I knew of the story. Okay. Okay, and but I think if you look at the majority of the moviegoers that maybe went and saw this, they were just wanting a, a fun flick. Not a fun flick, but you know, I was using well, the Roman term. And entertaining. Just, yeah. You know, just thinking on parallel, Adam, like one of your issues that you had with the uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, the biopic on mm-hmm. Queen, is I believe the historic inaccuracies. Am I correct? Well, that, and it just wasn't a good movie. Okay. I just didn't. I didn't feel much like this movie. I didn't feel anything during okay. during Bohemian Rhapsody. And much like this film with Bohemian Rhapsody, they really jammed a lot of time. Like before you know it, you're blinking, it and it's yep. the uh, early seventies, mid seventies, and then you're you're in Live Aid. And now for yeah. the last the last uh, forty five minutes of film, you yep. were just in Live Aid. But don't you think that they did that so they would bring more of the regular people in to see yes, that movie? 100%. I mean, you got to understand that's what they do a lot. They weren't going to deep dive into Freddie's HIV and Freddie's love affairs and Freddie. Yeah. They weren't just they just weren't going to do that. People want to sing, see him sing songs. Right. They want know? him to be Freddie Mercury. Right. Yeah, and that's that's sad because it's not truly a biopic. It, it's, I get that. It's, it's a highlight reel. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I mean, uh, Rocket Man, the uh, Rocket John, Man is amazing. Yeah, now that's more of a biopic because it goes down yeah. the gritty. Mm-hmm. It, it gets gritty, mm-hmm. and, and that's what I was kind of hoping with uh, this. It does a little bit, but again, to me, it. it I for you and listening, listen, Lynn, I highly challenge you to check out the Von Eric story, you know, and uh, message us, tell us what you think, because. It really is fantastic if you don't know it. Um, it really is captivating. It's not a, just a wrestling story. It's a family story. It's a. It's barely a wrestling story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wrestling is just the central theme. It's what they do. Yeah, it's, not, it's their job. Yeah. It's, Can I ask you both a question without you getting upset? That's a weird no. way to... Yes. Do you think both of you had a little bit of issues with this movie or non, as you said, non-emotion because of the relationships with your fathers? Yes. Probably, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I have no doubt because, I mean, this, but this is like with anything it, where it, there's transference, where mm-hmm. you, you, for the record, I love my dad. Let me be very I'm not, clear. I'm not saying that. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't go but, into detail of anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what I, that's why I, yeah, that's why I'm so passionate about the father. And I get because that. Because I had a loving father. Oh, yeah. And I get that. And, and I've had a hard ass dad. Uh, yes. But a loving hard ass dad. I mean, my dad got me out of some shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not referring to Monty. I'm referring to. The other father. Oh, I can barely remember him. I understand. But do you see where I'm saying? Like, so at the end, he said he didn't see what I saw with uh-huh. the, how he's breaking the cycle and he was being, did you get any of that emotion from that? I, I got what you were saying. I didn't get any emotion from it. Mm-hmm. Not because of the way the movie was done. I, mm-hmm. I honestly think if I saw it in the theater, I would have been a mess. Mm-hmm. Uh, watching it at home, I was just waiting for it to be over. Okay. And when it got to that part, I'm like, oh, my God, it's not done yet. Because mm-hmm. it was after the, the it was that was after the the, the water scene. Yes. Well, it, and I was yeah. like, geez, it's not exactly like it yeah. was Lord of the Rings where <laughs> we were having 15 different. No, endings. but it was it was too long. <laughs> yeah. Too it long felt, for the story it, it was telling. It felt like it was over many times yes. when it wasn't yeah. over. Like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> you could have you could have ended it a few times mm-hmm. and had a prologue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I thought they were going to have more information than just the picture of the family and what Kevin did for some reason. I wanted to know, like, I had to look up how did the mother and father die. Yeah. I didn't know if they killed themselves. I don't know if somebody killed them. Like, I was interested, but they didn't even touch about the mother and father. No. It was all about Kevin. 
Yeah, because it, it was technically all about the brothers and the ones who I get it, brothers. but I wanted to know what happened to the mother or the father. But you use the story of Kevin for the vehicle to mm-hmm. tell the story of the brothers. Yeah. That's why the promo shot was Kevin, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, so on and so forth. And, you know, when his parents went to France, he was home alone. <laughs> And on that note, we're going <laughs> to end this one. Oh, Kevin. Yep. Anyone named oh, Kevin is going to man. be is going to be related to Kevin McAllister. I like it. It's fine. All right. It's so uh, final thoughts on Iron Claw. Would you would you not recommend? And why? <laughs> uh, it's I would recommend it if it's a particular genre specifically. You wanted to see certain things, sure, go for it, awesome. But in terms of a drama about brothers or family, there's you just 20... watch Fast and Furious. Well, no, like, hell yeah, you, you could watch The Wood. You could watch other things where it shows The, the... Wood of all movies. You choose <laughs> oh, yeah. The Wood well, because it's... what. Brothers and, and, and things in and, and the camaraderie. I mean, things, things that accordance. I mean, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. That just threw me. Well, no. I mean, it, I mean, you it, should it, watch it, Belly. So. <laughs> Juice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, but no. Menace to Society. Oh Boys God. in the Hood. Yeah. Uh, New Jack City. Uh, but no. Uh, <laughs> damn it. But no. Uh, Tommy Boy. He says brother a lot in that movie. Brothers don't shake hands. Brothers kind of hug. Yeah, I, I've said that to my older brother a few times, and he had the same reaction. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. No, no, Tony, stop it. All right, you've but lost anyways, your privilege to keep no, talking. No, uh, but to to bring it back, it would be... You're not very strict on that. <laughs> yep, yeah. Uh, uh, you oh, have control of the microphone. You do. You could shut me off any time. This is on you. I am not that Choke person. him out. Choke him out and say you were supposed to watch him. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That was awful. What you didn't see is Allison tried to take the microphone away and failed. Oh, you hit me. Why'd you hit me? So my take on the movie. <laughs> no, that was hysterics. I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. Seriously, if you're in an abusive relationship, seek help as soon as possible. Please go ahead. Uh, I did not like this movie, but I don't think it was a bad movie. It just wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, I highly recommend seeing it because it was really well. It was very well acted. As Allison said, very well shot. Um, the music was good. Everything was just great about it. I just didn't really care for the movie because I didn't care for the characters. I hated the father. I mean, I know you're supposed to, but I didn't connect with it as much as I thought I was going to. Maybe that's a problem I had with it that I was expecting to because mm-hmm. everyone told me to. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm that. glad I got to see it. I'm glad I watched it, but uh, I, and I do recommend it, but uh, I did not like it. Mm. Okay, Allison? I'm glad I watched it. I didn't think going in... I wanted to see it. This was my last, this was, I left this movie for the end. Um, but I was like going into it thinking it was, you know, wrestling. It was going to be boring. Um, I won't watch it again. There's no need. Um, but I'm glad I saw it. Like I said, I think it was, it was done well. Um, I mean, I, I would recommend it, but I need to tell people going in that it's not, if you're going in to see like all about wrestling, you know, don't be upset that yeah, it's, it's not, not a it's not, movie. yeah, it's not heavy wrestling. Um, but no, it wasn't, it wasn't bad at all. I'm glad I watched it. I'm glad I paid $5. Dollar, dollar bills. Uh-huh. Dollar, so, dollar bill, yeah. yeah. It was a two and a half hour movie that felt like four. Yeah, uh, maybe it, not four for me, but it did. It was long. Oh my it god, it long. felt like it took me all damn day to watch this thing. <laughs> it, it didn't feel two and a half hours of me, but again, a, a different set of eyes. Like I, I was more like, "Why didn't you go there? What? What, what the hell?" Yeah, you were critiquing it. Yeah, I wanted it to be longer. <laughs> yeah, I wanted it to be different. <laughs> same time period, but or same time frame, but let's put these things in there, please. Just the, at least you said please. Of, well, naturally, I mean, you, you put the money on the table and you ask your please. So, what is your rating? Oof. Um, Oof. At, out of out of five hundred. Out of five. Uh, out of five. Out of five headlocks. Uh, out of five baby oils. Okay. Jesus Christ. Uh, I would probably give it uh, two and a half. Okay. And the half last time, this is like. We haven't done a rating in a long I know, time. But I know no. what I want to say. That's why I brought it up. Oh, okay. And okay. I'm glad he didn't steal it from me. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Adam. You better not steal it. Uh, uh, I already told you what I was going to say. No, I don't remember. Speedos or Okay, no. I, 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 give it, I give it three and three and a half headlocks. 
Oh, okay. Box. Okay. okay. All right. Allison? I give it three. Woo! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we also we also determined you're the only one that could do that here. No kidding. Oh. Like, <laughs> I really want to watch more Ric Flair now. Oh, he was kind of hot. Is, is he kind of hot in real life or no? Not yeah, anymore. Was, well, no. was he back then? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 He was yeah. the nature boy. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, that was his name. Well, Nature he Boy stole Rick that Flair. from Buddy Rogers, but yes, yeah. that's, that's his Buddy name. Rogers. <laughs> yeah, you know, the country singer. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I highly recommend that you watch um, uh, Thirty for Behind Thirty. The music. No, oh, Thirty for oh, Thirty. Oh, I have watched those before. <laughs> no, 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 no. They got one of Ric Flair. Oh, highly right. recommend. All right. Wait. Pause. The Nature Boy. Like, did he come out like a dirty hippie? I don't understand. What does no, the Nature was, Boy mean? He was. He was the Adonis of of a white of the white man. Oh. You know, he had the white hair yeah, yeah. and just wore the thing and he came out. I got this a 60,000 gold watch. Yeah, because in this movie, he he was just looking like the white Rick James or something. <laughs> High like fine profiling. Okay. No one ever makes okay. one of his lisp, for the record. I wouldn't make one of Hogan. anyone's lisp if they were that big. Yeah. I mean, he's like three foot two. He's not that. No, big, I mean, he's so. big. He's a big Well, no, man. no, yeah. But, anyways, that's another conversation for another day. Um, he's big in the pants. <laughs> uh, anyways, Allison. Oh, he's not hot anymore. No, he's no. a grandpa. Oh, he's 75. No yeah. kidding. Oh. What did you ex- I don't look know. at Ric Flair younger? I, I will. I will. I will. <laughs> I, will. Oh, I will. I will. It was. Right. So right. go ahead and send us out. Oh, yes. It's I'm a good thing you didn't up. give it like three swastika capes. Oh, no, boy. Oh, boy. I, I forgot all about that. <laughs> That's why oh, I brought boy. Good old Fritz. <laughs> well, Springtime no. for Hitler and, and Germany. Germany. Somebody needs to make a Von Trapp versus Von <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Fight oh, cage fuck. match. Mm-hmm. I feel bad for uh, those Von Traps. Boy, I miss I miss celebrity death match now. Yeah, yeah. I'll allow it. <laughs> and there could be like a Get ring out. a ring girl. Did, did they have? They didn't have ring girls no. back then. Yeah. They don't have ring girls in wrestling. Uh, Von Traps would never fight the Von Erichs. So oh let's yeah, just that's put boxing. A- yeah. Well, for my version, <laughs> Maria or a nun, like a sexy nun, could come out and be the ring girl. Yeah, they could, they could uh, be their girlfriend that comes out on the side. No. Oh, boy. The girlfriend? Whose girlfriend? Any of them. The oh. manager. You yeah. Know, just, yeah. And in her corner, they have the nun. Oh, the Von Erich's leg got taken out, and now the nun is pulling it, uh, Carrie's leg and throwing it around the <laughs> ring. Ouch. Oh, too many Hail Marys for that one. Oh, man. Now he's just Stubby Von Erich. Oh. Oh, man. Stubby Von Erich. Just legs right from underneath it. Oh, man. All right. Good luck well, trying to put the figure four in that one today. Ho ho. Well, that was Iron Claw. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for Probably this. Uh, the, thank you for. Uh, uh, thank you, Roman, for making us watch this. I did enjoy the 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 viewing. I just don't didn't enjoy the movie, and uh, maybe we'll have better luck on the next one. Uh, so he, he's already already requested for me to put a speedo and get greased up. I did. Folks. I yeah. did. Um, but that that's, was, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, join us again next time. Uh, my name's Adam. Uh, once again, I'm here with uh, with Allison and Roman. And uh, we'll see you on our final episode of the A24 non-horror series. And don't forget to keep celebrating cinema. Bye-bye. Got me my phone. Got me oh,